Hi guys and welcome to At Home with Elisa. It is a beautiful winter's day today. It's about 19 degrees um, and it is just so lovely in the sun so I'm really enjoying it. I am just in the middle of prepping everything to get ready for spring and summer. Uh, we are in August at the moment and that for us is winter um, and we obviously are just on the verge of spring. We are having some days that are like spring weather and it's beautiful 24 degrees and then we revert back to like 15 degrees which is which is not great but it's just lovely. I know it's not far off so I really need to get preparing all of the garden ready for a busy spring and summer and I thought I would take you along for the journey with me. So I wanted to do something a little bit different and just kind of film a week uh, of me gardening and of doing things around our property. Um, obviously we've only been here two and a half years, it's still very new, we're still going through the council process but we are enjoying um, trying to make it our own property and turn it from just grassland into a beautiful property. So it does take a lot of work. <laughs> um, I do work around, we have our own business so I do have to work around that and children and you know life, everybody has life. But I do really enjoy getting my time out in the garden and I wanted to show you some of the things that I'm doing at this point in time to make sure that we do have a beautiful garden and try and prepare for the times ahead so I thought you might enjoy following along this week so I do have some planting to do I have some um, sort of like construction garden construction to do um, I have a lot of things on my to-do list I, I am a list person and I have a long to-do list and yes let's get stuck into it before we get stuck into it can we just appreciate how cute this little man is so these are the cushions off my chair and this is what he sits on and he's staring up the road waiting for dad to get home. <laughs> but how cute is he? So the first thing I want to do is I have this beautiful teepee here which is growing sweet peas and I have a fence just along here which is growing more sweet peas of a different colour. But behind it I have about four feet essentially of no man's land which just fills up with weeds the weeds try and get through to the um, sweet peas and the sweet peas don't really have I have to keep coming around this side of the fence to actually feed the sweet peas back on to keep them climbing up this here um, now I don't love this back here that is our neighbor's fence so that is not our property and what I want to do is try and screen out all these long grasses that are on their side of the fence so this I'm thinking about turning into a storage area I'm going to put landscape fabric on the ground but what I'm also thinking is that I'll put landscape fabric attach it to this post this post and all the way over to the far post as well and it will kind of act as a fence and a black fence obviously recedes which will mean when the sweet peas flower they should look a lot nicer the only thing I'm concerned of is that this direction here is where our winter sun comes from so I'm going to take it to the top of this post just here and see how it goes if it doesn't interfere with the garden I'll continue it up and maybe long term I might look at even putting an actual fence along um, the bordering fence of ours and our neighbors properties and then that way um, yeah it might look a lot nicer but I'm going to work on the temporary solution first and see if it is something that makes it look a little bit nicer back here just a bit nicer of a backdrop I just picked up this weed mat. It's called Pillar and it's from Bunnings. It had actually been recommended to me by somebody else. And this is my new nail gun that I just received. And I absolutely love this tool for the garden. This is the same landscape fabric that I've used underneath all the rock pathways in my garden and I was just making sure that it was doubled over so that it doesn't fray. We just get a lot of high wind here and I have noticed that it can tend to fray so making sure it's folded over ensures that it isn't going to fray in the wind. So I'm just at the second post. Um, I'm loving this nail gun by the way, just an Ozito from Bunnings, loving it. We can use it with fencing as well. So what I'm going to do is just try and pull it tight so that um, hopefully I don't get any lines. I can see the wind's going to be an issue. So what I might do is put a whole heap of staples down the pole um, so that hopefully it doesn't rip. It's all an experiment so we'll see how it goes. If I pull it 
nice and tight from the previous one. So we get a lot of high winds up here. Um, hopefully that number of staples will help. As I said, all in the experiment, but hopefully it makes it look a little bit nicer from the other side. Okay, more staples. Okay, pretty happy with that. See that? That's a leech. You really should have worn gum boots. So my staple gun ran out of staples. I don't know how to change the staples. I'll see if I can figure it out. <laughs> okay, so I didn't bother reading the instructions. I just um, thought of it as a big office stapler. So, see if it works. Okay, so I'm back inside the garden now. Let's have a look and see what it looks like. So it does look a lot different. Um, can't say I absolutely love it, but it does cut out all the mess of all the grasses just here. Um, as I said, I'm just gonna see how it goes with regards to the sweet peas. And then if it works, I'll continue it up to the top of that post there. Goes all the way across to the top of that post there. Obviously all this here, sorry that's Eugene, obviously all this here will be covered by um, gravel but I just wanted to get this better so that my sweet peas will hopefully grow a little bit better. So as you can see the having the black plastic there allows it all to actually grow up and the sweet peas won't get too far before they'll actually turn around and come back through the fence. I'll still have to obviously thread them through but I don't think it'll be as hard as it was previously. And this area here, I'll just landscape fabric it. I'll use it as a storage area back here, obviously for like, you know, irrigation parts, fencing parts. And um, I'll address if I actually need a proper fence at a later date, but it just cuts out all of this here, which will be nice. And I just noticed today that the buds are just starting to form on these beautiful, beautiful trees that we have here. These are our neighbor's trees. Um, what's the name of them? Are they are maple? I'll put it on the screen. I can't remember what they're called, but um, they do lose all their leaves in autumn and then for winter they're gone and then they come back in spring and it's just glorious. But it does cut out a lot of that mess. So I'm kind of liking that. By the time I get the flowers come through, I think that will look a lot better. And obviously once the gravel's down it'll look nice so yeah i'm thinking about continuing it between this post and this post here so i have to sort out that mess of pot plants but i'm thinking about continuing that over but that does look nice those grasses there so we'll see what happens now these roses here are the Pierre de Ronzard, which is also known as an Eden climbing rose. They are an absolutely gorgeous David Austin rose. And I just wanted to create an arbor going into our garden with those to grow on. Now I haven't actually created that arbor as yet, but I know that I'll be doing it very shortly. So I wanted to get the roses in the ground, um, just the weather's heating up and I wanna make sure that we've got everything in the gardens that can be watered so they don't dry out in pots. And hopefully I will have that um, garden arbor up and running very, very shortly. And they will create such a beautiful entrance into the garden area.
So you'll notice when I plant this rose, I've actually pointed it towards the edge of the garden bed. Um, I did this specifically because I have got that arbor going up at the very end of that garden bed there, and it will obviously form and be forced to grow directly up the arbor rather than trying to make it stand straight and it growing straight. I want it to be intertwined amongst the arbor. And then just here, I'm planting a beautiful, beautiful gardenia called a Magnifica gardenia. These are my favorite gardenias. They're the biggest ones that we can get. The flowers are the biggest, I should say. Biggest gardenias that we can get here. And they are absolutely stunning. The scent is beautiful. And on the other side of this, just out of camera shot, on the other side of this um, entryway into the garden, I've actually already got a hedge of gardenia magnificas planted so i only had this one little section here on the other side of the entryway just to plant up today and i had one established one which is the big one that's planted and then i just purchased a smaller one as well so i am hoping to create a beautiful gardenia hedge eventually and this is the other Eden Climbing Rose or Pierre de Ronsard, just planted for that um, entryway into the garden and I cannot wait until I can get that up. I just think visually it will look stunning. Whenever I plant anything new in the garden, I really like to give it a good dose of seaweed solution. Um, this brand here is just called Sea Soul, and it just really helps to settle in the roots so that um, it helps to minimize any shock that the plant may get from transplanting. So I give them a really good, thick, thick drink of that, and hopefully they should be very happy in their new home. I always make sure if I have planted anything new, I just leave the watering can there because what I'll do is I'll come back tomorrow and actually give it another good soak as well. But the hedge is coming along nicely. I'm very happy with how this is going to look. So it's a very exciting time in the season. It's the end of winter and the start of spring, which means I'm able to create my first bouquet. It's only a small posy, but I'm excited nevertheless. This flower here is called Anchilla or Yarrow. I have Tiller Girl's Sweet Peas. I have Snapdragons, which are perennial. Norman Wisdom White Sweet Peas, Jonquils. And I have some anemones as well. And I think I have one more, which is a gerbera. Oh, and another one, a bearded iris, which sort of come up and I wasn't really expecting to pick them so early. It's an early achiever, but I love it. I really do love having the opportunity to actually just go out and harvest some flowers from the garden. These will just sit on my dining table now for the next week or so and it, it doesn't have to be overly um, creative and, and beautiful looking. It's just a matter of enjoying the flowers that you've got to harvest at the time. Um, if anyone can hear any snoring in the background, that's my bulldog. Please excuse him. He's um, having a midday nap, nap at the moment. <laughs> So these are my little seedlings that I've got going. This is a whole tray of ranunculus and I obviously started planting these ones out already. Now, um, the garden extension that I was hoping to have done just hasn't been done. Our neighbor is helping us with that and he's just been a bit busy moving into his house. So I'm thinking that at this point, these may end up flowering in this tray. It's not the best, but it is what it is. I do have some little um, plants here that I purchased just recently. These will be for landscaping. So I've got different, that's a thrip. I have different plants here that I purchased just for landscaping. Those ones there, I'm just gonna leave those in those pots because I will put those up a little bit later. But I have some seedlings, like I have some cornflower. 
So I did start cornflower from seed, but it didn't do too well, so I need to plant that out. I have some chrysanthemums as well, started from seeds. So they need to get into the ground. I can see they're changing colour, so that's not great and they need a good feed. I also have some capsicums um, and chilli plants that I overwintered and they are just starting to come back. So they have come out, this one as well, they have come out of my greenhouse because these ones here will go straight into the garden when it comes time. Still a little bit too cool at the moment so I'm not, I'm not game just in case we get really really low but the weather is warming up. I also have one, two and three, these are yarrow plants. I just planted these not long ago, they're a bit dry actually, I'll give them a water. But I planted them not long ago so they should come up for spring as well. So if you've been following my channel you would know about a thing called the Posy Project which is something that I'm undertaking this year with a few friends of mine. Um, I'm growing flowers in order to create posies for um, people at a retirement village, a nursing home not far from here. Um, the first lot of posies will be in about three weeks time and I'm really hoping that my garden gets into gear quickly because it's a bit slow to wake up this year. It's very very slow and I'm obviously on a deadline so <laughs> I'm hoping that it really starts to go into overdrive soon and then I have flowers to hand out. But I do have quite a few seedlings that I need to get into the ground as well. Um, most of them are planted but I still have a few left to plant out. So one of them is sea holly. Now this is a sea holly that I started obviously from seed. I will put a picture up of what it looks like. Um, totally new plant to me. Very excited to get that one into the ground. I also have these snapdragons called apple blossom. They are one that I think is absolutely stunning. Um, definitely a favorite snapdragon that I've always wanted to grow. I didn't have great germination on them. It's definitely my first time growing them but I will get these into the ground today and with these I know they get tall so I need to stake them when I actually put them into the ground. I also have some carnation giants, some poppy pandora and some bunny tails. Now these weren't doing too well the other day when I looked at them so I'll clean those up before I plant them out but they're a really good filler. So I have a garden bed that I'm purely doing for um, new to me flowers this year. So obviously I'm growing quite a few different flowers that I haven't actually tried out before. So I am going to be putting them in the one garden bed so that I can sort of pay particular attention to them. And then I also have another large garden bed called my TP garden bed. And it is a very large area for um, different flowers and stuff that I have grown before. So I'll pop some in there as well. I started off just getting the stakes in the ground just for those apple blossom snapdragons. They really are something that is absolutely stunning. As I said, I didn't have great germination, but that I'd say that would probably be user. <laughs> that would be me. That wouldn't necessarily be the seeds. I'm still learning when it comes to um, different plants, but yes, it's always fun. Those roots look fantastic. These poppy pandora seedlings are so tiny. I've never had good luck with poppies. Um, I think I might be a bit too heavy handed when it comes to sowing them, but I at least got some to germinate. So I'll take it as a win and we'll see how they go. So I have the snapdragon apple blossom planted in this garden bed and on the other side I have the poppy pandora. 
So the poppy Pandora just there and there. So that actually completed that garden bed, which I wasn't really expecting. I thought I could get more in it, but that's all planted out and mulched now. So that's ready. I just have to hook up gray water to this garden, um, which I will hopefully do in the next couple of days, but I'll just keep hand watering it till then. And I just washed everything in with um, some really diluted sea salt just to help those roots settle in. So what I'm gonna do now is just concentrate on planting out this section here. I have ranunculus already planted just in this sort of area here at the front. The sweet peas on the tower and I have, sorry, I'm not sure what happened to the audio, but I'm saying I've got sweet peas at the very back, the white ones, and a pathway just in front to access. So I'm just working out where I wanna plant things out. I think I might do the bunny tail. So this is for grey water, so um, I can have this um, watered by grey water. So I might do the bunny tails along the edge here just because I know that they're not very high, so they might be nice along the edge of the garden. Um, now the giant carnation I'll put in here, and the sea holly I'm going to plant sort of like in this mid area here of the garden bed. So bunny tails along the front, the giant carnations in the middle, and then the sea holly towards the outside. I think that will work. So I am just about to plant out the carnation giants. These are really, really small seedlings. I wouldn't normally put them into the ground um, this small, but I just, I wanna get them out of the greenhouse because it's getting quite hot in there. During the day, I actually, um, I didn't open up the window in there the other day and my goodness, it was so hot in there. So I wanna get these into the ground. I think they'll stand a better chance outside. So I'm just about to plant those now. Look at these tiny things. I don't know if they're gonna survive this, but I'm ready to get them out of the greenhouse. And last planting for the day is the Sea Holly Deep Blue. These are a little bit bigger, but um, I wasn't sure how germination would go because I haven't grown these before. So I literally just scattered the seed in here and I'm not sure how many plants I actually have. So let's find out.
Okay, so all along the purple grey water pipe on this side of the garden is actually planted out now um, with that sea holly, the giant carnation and the bunny tails. So as I said, they were really, really small, like you can't even see them. They're tiny. But they will fill in and the weather is changing a little bit. So it is getting warmer. We're having much warmer days and hopefully they come on and they fill in this area now i will mulch over the top of the gray water pipe however i'm just reluctant to do it as yet because i just want to make sure that it's functioning perfectly before i do actually mulch over it and hide it so i'm going to leave it out for a little bit longer till i know it's working right and then i'll be happy to mulch over the top so on this day while I was gardening, my husband was actually working on our garden expansion. So he was just working on the fence posts. It was such a big job. He had to drill into the ground with a post hole digger and then concrete all the fence posts in. And it really was quite labor intensive. We've been working on it for a while. And then that staple gun came in so handy when we were able to actually attach all of the chicken wire just to keep wallabies out. We have some severe wallaby pressure here and over night time they would absolutely love to get into my garden and to all my seedlings. So yes, very important to have a good fence around a garden. I cannot believe that I'm so lucky to have a huge new garden area to be able to garden in, to grow food for our family, to grow flowers for the Posy project, and I just consider myself so blessed. Look at this area, it's going to be stunning. Thank you so much for joining me for this week in the garden. Um, I don't always get the chance to get out into the garden daily. Um, sometimes it's just every few days, but now that the weather's starting to warm up a little bit, I should be able to get out into the garden a little bit more because the days are getting longer, which is absolutely lovely. Um, I have just found out as well that the garden extension that I have been talking about for a while is actually about to happen. So. We should be getting that ground cleared, which um, will just clear all the grass and then I will be able to plant. I'm hoping to get some sunflowers and some corn into the ground this week. So very excited, but I'll keep you updated about that when that does happen. But thank you so much for joining me this week. Take care. Bye.